Well, I appreciate that. Um, I want to make one comment about uh, the Oklahoma City bombings um, before I go on to Dr. Joy Pugh, which she's a very anointed woman, very, very anointed woman. Um, as far as Oklahoma City bombings, like when I first found out about 9-11 and the fact that um, you know, two two buildings were hit by planes and three buildings came down, and that the only way those buildings really ever could have come down is if um, you know if explosives were implanted inside of the, those buildings at some point prior to the terrorist events of 9/11. Well, research in 9/11 also led me to research other incidents of government-sponsored terror, and if you do your research, you you go back even to World War II, the Spanish-American War, um, uh, there, all these incidents where the governments allowed terrorist events to happen to catalyze the public into supporting war. It's like even with World War II, Dwight D. Eisenhower, they, they knew they had broken the code. They knew exactly what day the Japanese were going to attack. Uh, they even removed a radar installation out of, uh, I believe it was near Alaska or Hawaii or somewhere, somewhere in that area, so that the um, Japanese invasion of Pearl Harbor would be successful and it would legitimize an entrance of America into World War II. Um, and then if you study like Waco and the Oklahoma City bombings and even the World, you know, the World Chain at the Center 93 bombing, all those different things also verify the fact that uh, our government or some aspect of our government, some dark aspect of our government, is sponsoring and supporting these terrorist events on the American public and the world public um, as a catalyst for their agenda, which they want to bring in the Third Crusader War now, as Albert Pike stated way back in the 18th century um, in a letter to uh, Giuseppe Mazzini where he outlined these three world wars so that they could bring in a world government. And we know that after the first world war they tried with the League of Nations and the second world war brought in the United Nations and they're hoping that this third world war with the destruction of America will bring in this world government and unite all the regions of the world. Now, as far as Dr. Joy, um, very anointed woman, and as far as her research, I was amazed when I, I found out about her and came to understand that her conclusions were very much the same conclusions that the Lord was leading me to understand and giving me an eye of truth for. Um, and so when I, I saw that she was coming to the same conclusions as I was, uh, I contacted her and, and Luckily, we are both from the same neck of the wood. She lives maybe two or three hours away from me. Um, but she was doing a book signing up near near where I live here in the Athens, Georgia area. And so when I contacted her and I spoke with her about the things that I knew and the research that I've done, she was very interested in doing an interview with me because she thought that I was knowledgeable already on the things that she had researched and the things that she had written about. Um, and a lot of the interviews that she was, she was doing with other people at that time uh, was basically just rehashing basic tenets of her book. Whereas when we did the interview and, um, and, and did the video, we really got into some deeper aspects of the book because she didn't have to educate me on the things that she had already researched um, because I had come to those same conclusions myself. So we Bobby, went in. Then, uh, feel free to go into those specifics because our listening audience is familiar with Dr. Joy Pugh because we've, we interviewed her extensively on this very program. Well, sure. Okay. Well, one of the, one of the things that, um, that I had been led to was the knowledge that Cain was not a child of Adam's. And that that was one of the things back when I interviewed her a few uh, years ago or, or a year or so ago. Um, that wasn't mainstream knowledge as far as even in the alternative um, Christian um, research, you know, the different websites that were looking into different things and that were 
coming to understand about certain esoteric aspects of the New World Order agenda and, um, you know, like Daniel's vision of the world government and how all these things come together. But that one aspect about Cain being a child of the devils and not a child of Adam and how the two bloodlines are kept separate um, and, and in Genesis and Cain is not even, uh, Cain is not listed as a progeny of, of Adam and he is kept as a separate bloodline and all the generations of Cain are also kept as a separate bloodline. And then when when people understand about the two bloodline theory and that there are indeed two separate bloodlines, then they can also understand why it was that Yahweh, when he took um, Moses and the people into the promised land and sent Joshua in to, to clear out the promised land, that he told them to spare no man, woman, or child. Because uh, that that would sound almost brutal or barbaric if you did not consider that this bloodline was a, a, a Luciferian bloodline that worshipped the multiple gods, the fallen angels. They ate flesh, they drank blood, um, and they wore, they, they were causing war against humankind. And they were also um, of the homo, they were homosexuals and they did all kind of abominable things and that's why the Lord knew that he must wipe out that bloodline completely and if and that was and people don't even understand that 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 was the whole reason that the flood came in was so that the Lord could wipe out that flesh it wasn't that he wanted to wipe out Adam's bloodline and the seed of Adam uh, it was because the fallen angels had come in and slept with the daughters of man created this race of giants this race of giants started the war with humanity and started to eat the flesh and drink the blood of humans. And it was at that time that the Lord said he was going to wipe out all flesh and repopulate the planet with uh, Noah and his children. And it was at that time, too, that he reestablished the covenant with them. And the one thing that he specifically told them was that they should eat no flesh with the blood in it because the 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 life force is the blood and if they do that that their own lives shall be required of them and so unless you understand about the two bloodline theory you won't even understand why the flood came and also why the lord sent joshua and the the band of uh, israeli uh the israeli tribes to clear out that land and to spare no man woman or child um, and for those people that do understand that, all of that makes complete sense. Correct. Yep. Yes, it's very interesting. And it is interesting for anyone who doubts what you are saying, why isn't Cain listed in the bloodline of Adam? Right. And, and, if you, and, and I know I've talked to Dr. Joy about this, uh, uh, the, the mysterious conversations that went on uh, in Genesis the early parts, chapters 2, 3, and uh, it does, it, it makes you wonder uh, the wording of it and, uh, you know, how, how Eve could be the mother of all, yet uh, nowhere is it ever said that Adam was the father of all. Mm -hmm. You begin to wonder right there, well, maybe there's something going on, there's a dynamic going on, because in that very same chapter we have the start of two definite seeds right. the seed of Satan and the seed of the woman who becomes and leads to Jesus Christ so right there if anyone really does any a really good searching uh, and sees all of the other things that are going on uh, even with the book of Joshua which is referred to in the book of uh, Joshua uh, you see some very strange things going on and I believe if I'm not mistaken that that book traced the lineage of Cain and all of the strange animals that came about and right. uh, their advanced technologies. And it all fits very well in with the succeeding advanced knowledges that Dr. Uh, Joy refers to as the tablets of destiny that mm -hmm. seem to have been se uh, secreted uh, into the line of Cain and their succeeding generations that wound up being what I would frame as the secret societies 
that right. uh, are par- part and parcel of what we're dealing with this very day as the minions. We frame in our book then, the, uh, uh, at least uh, you know I, I do when I do the asides in the book, that all this evil that we see about us needs to have a source to it. And I felt that the New World Order was only an extension of the old Babylonian system, which had already given themselves over to, to uh, uh, pagan idolatry, uh, which really what it boils down to is, is the honoring of the God of this world, which Jesus referred to as Lucifer or Satan. Mm-hmm. So, every, and as I said before, nothing happens in a vacuum. And everything that we see about it today brings us back to what has already transpired in the past. As Solomon exactly. said, nothing new under the sun. Under the sun. 